right, we got serious news to cover. Big news on Ebola. You tell Kit Daniels, it, it, it refreshes late on my computer for some reason. If that article's out, red link it. Please bring it to me as soon as it's done. Uh, we don't have this news ready yet for folks. But uh, look at this Paul Watson article. Agroterrorism, feds shut down seed library in Pennsylvania. Now that Monsanto has completely taken over the FDA board, they have shut it down. They're going into private seed banks that have heirloom seeds and shutting them down because Big Agra has done things like gone out and bought up all the heirloom seeds so they can destroy them. And then they go out and claim that, oh, now you don't own this. It's patented, even though you purchased it and own it. It's like saying, you know, they patented a Volkswagen from 1970 or a 1977 or whatever, Super Beetle, whatever it is. And so you own one so they can take it. This is just turning into total Twilight Zone. Again, just, just, just ask Kit, j j just let me know, has that gone up yet? Because that's all I want to know. It's up. It's up. It's up. It's up. Just print it for me because whatever this computer does, it does not refresh like the other computers in the office. I need it. I want to print it off, red link it. I'll tell folks what it is after we take calls here. Uh, let's go to Paul in California. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, um, I'm in California, and I just like to say that I think that a lot of what's going on is to entertain us and get us off of the cure. They are putting crisis after crisis, and we need to concentrate on getting rid of our leadership. And the easiest way to do that, I believe, is the Occupy stuff. If the people of the United States really knew what the Fed and Wall Street was doing, our problem would be solved. I think they put a lot of effort against the Occupy movement, and impeachment would happen easily if that was followed through on. Well, caller, that's a very sophisticated point you bring up. I mean, you, you say it simply, and, and, and you sound like an eloquent, intelligent per person, and, and I respect what you say, and I tend to agree with you at one level. The Occupy movement was a projection of mainstream media, because I was here covering it day by day, that people are bad at Wall Street, they're going to take action, they want socialism, they want to crush the banks, and communism will save us. Now, the people that showed up didn't really believe that in most cases, it was a very diverse group. And it was mainly a way to then project onto any anti-corruption in Wall Street movement that you're a bunch of communists. Like, like the globalist brand rebellion in Latin America or Asia always is communist. Because they don't want it to be legitimate, you know, nationalism like Putin's doing. That really freaks them out. They don't want it to be something that's hard for them to demonize. They, they want it to be their failed, corrupt, evil ideology that they've already used to overthrow country after country. Because it failed for the people, it succeeded for the globalists to knock countries out, keep them out of competition, and only have a few top thugs the robber barons have to deal with, like Joseph Stalin or Mao Zedong. So I watched that happen, and I watched terrible things done to Occupy. And when Occupy wouldn't be taken over by Obama, and wouldn't be taken over and turned into a George Soros army, when, when Al Gore said we need an Arab Spring in America, then they had a 36-city SWAT team raid out of Nazi Germany on these peaceful people showing federal control with 36-city police departments under their command. That's a whole other scandal to shut down Occupy and to scare the hell out of anybody else that wants to go out and protest another banker bailout, another banker wealth transfer. Most of the Occupy people were praising Obamacare and wanting it to be passed and then implemented, not knowing it was written by offshore banks and insurance companies as a wealth transfer, a banker bailout, to the banks and insurance companies with death panels, everything else. I would go down there, they'd say, Alex, I used to like you when you didn't like Bush. I'm like, well, he was for war and all this stuff, but... I was always a constitutionalist. Bush wasn't. It wasn't about Republican, Democrat. It was about what was right. And so when they cracked down on them and, and, and all those cities at once, that was a staged event. But then it also had the effect of lionizing them. So I just broke down the PSYOP right there as simply as I can. There's more to it. What do you say to that? Uh, well, I think if the people knew what was really going on in the Fed and or Wall Street, the impeachment would be instantaneous. 
And oh, I agree. Cities. We, I, I had a national movement, and I led it in three cities in, in Texas. I mean, I put my money where my mouth was. I went to Dallas, uh, Houston, and then San Antonio at the Fed buildings and led uh, close to 1,000 people at one, about 500 uh, in, in Houston and about 300 in San Antonio. And the police were supportive of our First Amendment at all three events. That was good. To point out the Federal Reserve was private and, to, uh, and we tried to go and work with Occupy at the time. And, and, and the, some of their members were happy, but others were there run by big foundations, run by Democrats, and would say, you get out of here right now. So, so, so I, I have tried to do what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the reason they're putting up so much uh, resistance and infiltrating, et cetera, is I believe that's their Achilles heel. If the people knew what was really going on, it would be over. And just one more comment on your style. A lot of times you say these people are doing this and that and that and this. And by the time you get done with the list of bad things, I've forgotten who's doing it to us. So I would just like you to return to the beginning just so I can remember where all these bad things are coming from. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Uh, look, I listen to myself all the time, and sometimes it's painful, and I wish I would have done this, I wish I would have done that, and I totally agree with you. It is a corporate technocracy of interlocking corporate anti-free market boards who pose as free market capitalists, preying on innovation, preying on science, using government to shut down their competition, exempting themselves from taxes. It's a breakaway government, a breakaway culture. It's a new form of tyranny. Kind of like the British monarchy would manage through their minions a far-flung empire. That's kind of what these globalists are, but it's hard to ever pin them down because it's all done through plausible deniability. And they've all written books bragging about this. Zbigniew Brzezinski, Henry Kissinger, Rothkop, uh, all of them. I mean... Newt Gingrich wrote the foreword to Alvin and Heidi Toffler's book, I forget which one, I read it years ago, saying we're going to have brain chips and chips and world government. This was like 25 years ago. So, I mean, I know who Newt Gingrich is. He wants us to have brain chips to buy and sell. And that's conservative? I mean, it's just, you know, give me a break. Uh, it's just, I just know too much. It's like the Gnarls Barkley song. Was I crazy? No, no, I just knew too much. Thank you, Paul. Good points. Good caller. Jared in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Go ahead, brother. Uh, so basically, uh, I've, I've been looking over some mainstream news articles, uh, like NBCNews.com, uh, regarding the border crisis. And it's almost like they, they talk about how it's being facilitated almost. And So you've uh, hit on something I'm here, and I'm going to hold you over because I didn't look at the clock. They will come out and say, isn't it ridiculous Ron Paul says give people freedom? Because you're smart, so that doesn't make sense. That's meant to make the average person go, ah, uh -huh, he wants to get, you know, you know, give me the cure to cancer. Or, ah, uh -huh, he says two plus two equals four. It's all just about ridicule. And then, yeah, they mainline it. Like, can you believe the Tea Party doesn't want totally open borders and disease to come across and to give everybody free stuff and let them vote? Can you believe how racist they are? Because it's just meant to target people that, that, that just go off peer pressure. And they go, yeah, yeah. Can you believe how bad they are? They don't want to snort Ebola. I'm going to come back to you to make your point. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock 
at InfoWarsLife.com. And we have to put this headline out because it's true. It could have happened. In fact, it becomes a probability if the outbreak continues. Ebola may have already crossed border, CBP report shows. And we probably want to change that headline to Border Patrol Report or Secret Government Report. So people don't know what that particular high-level board is in, the, in, in, in ICE. Feds likely shipping illegals from Ebola-struck countries across U.S. at taxpayer expense. Well, no, there's no doubt they're shipping them. So we're moving so fast here. Kit's doing a great job. It's just that I'm looking at this. There's no doubt from the report they're shipping people all over the country from Ebola-stricken countries. The question is, do they have it? There is no doubt that the feds are allowing in people from Ebola-stricken countries is the headline. Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com. And now they're shipping people with Ebola to hospitals that have people in them. That mean, they can't even control strep in hospitals or TB, much less Ebola. This is cuckoo. I have another report from pigs to monkeys, Ebola goes airborne. I'm going to cover that in the next segment after calls, after we get to the calls in the next segment, too. Uh, Jared in Arizona, go ahead and make your point. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, there's over 169 articles uh, uh, regarding the border crisis. And uh, one of them really supports your claims. It's called, the headline is really interesting. The How American Grown Gangs Are Fueling Border Crisis. So I'm clicking on the article right now. And basically, uh, there's this quote, like, like you say, total bombshell quote uh, by a Border Patrol officer. Uh, the author, he put it really quite eloquently when he said, Oh, hey, oh, New World Order. Poop. <laughs> yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Democratic seminar caller calling into the show. Thank you so much. Use the old CIA line from 1963. Call me a conspiracy theorist. Uh, let's talk to Alex in FEMA Region 5. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Good, brother. Go ahead. Uh, I called in the other day when you had Dr. Group on about uh, traditional Chinese medicine. I just have two points, sure. or two talking points i like to make before. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, first point is, I was wondering, do you take any, like, medicinal mushrooms? Go ahead. Medicinal mushrooms are said to be, like, really good for the DNA um, and the immune system, like uh, chaga mushroom, really good for the DNA. No, we have a, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I don't know why when I agree, I always say no. Yes, you're right. Uh, we have one of those mushrooms infused into one of the Wake Up America coffees to put a plug in. Uh, so absolutely, I mean, you're allowed to say those mushrooms boost uh, immunity and, and cell function. Go ahead. And also, the the second one point is a uh, it's kind of a request. I was wondering if you could get uh, Dr. Jerry Allen Johnson on your show sometime. I would really love to hear that because he's like the only person you could go to in the West if you want to learn about traditional Chinese medicine. He studied with, like, countless masters in China. He's a Taoist priest. I think he's the head abbot in the West. And just anything about, like, esoteric mysticism, anything related to that, he can, like, give you, like, a good detailed explanation on that. Sounds like an interesting person. What's his name again? Dr. Jerry Allen Johnson. His website is DaoistMagic.com. All right, I'll have to look into that. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Steve in Virginia. Steve, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yes, thanks a lot. We're uh, long-time listeners. Uh, we heard a lady, uh, Vicki Davis, uh, the other day. She was talking on another uh, GCN show about uh, this thing with the border as far as uh, the children purposely uh, down south being uh, vaccinated, and then they come across and uh, residual uh, I guess the residual effects of that can then spread to other people, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you probably heard a virologist or somebody. I don't know who that lady is, but a lot of the outbreaks are admitted to be from vaccines that actually make people sick and actually give them uh, the whooping cough or whatever it is. It's just incredible. Uh, that That's what's so scary about vaccines is one almost killed my dad's brother, who's still alive, when he got a, a tetanus shot, almost killed him. My grandmother says she got polio a week after she took the vaccine. And, I mean, it's just, like, incredible. Anything else, caller? 
Yeah, I just had a question. You know, a while back we'd heard about troop movements and uh, ba body bags being uh, and different supplies. Stay there. I want to hear about this question about that so you can fully have your question and, and, and any follow-up, Steve. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Steve in Virginia, go ahead and uh, ask your point, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I made a mistake. I think we heard the lady on RBN uh, the other day. But the, but I was asking about some time ago we heard about troop movements, uh, supplies being moved. Uh, I'm in FEMA Region 3, and that was the one they mentioned, the body bags being uh, piled up and different uh, activities uh, preparing for something. And uh, we've been wondering, well, which catastrophe or false flag are they preparing for, you know? And uh, I was just wondering if you had any any update on that or what your... your uh, sure, belief? sure. Uh, I appreciate your call, sir. There are... There are all sorts of operations we learn about, but we only learn about a piece of it from what's leaked or what comes out in the news or from what we witness. And then we have to connect it to all the other past activities we've seen to try to put the rest of it together. But we had articles five years ago, it had to be, that made national news. We're all over the country. They're preparing mass graves, body bags, all of it. And then they would go find one part of our story that might or might not have been stockpiling plastic grave liners to move dead bodies in Georgia for the CDC that's based there where the Ebola now is. And so they would take that because it wasn't completely clear and try to discredit the whole story. And I see these fact check stories all the time like, is InfoWars telling the truth? I saw one the other day about New York uh, allotting money to rat out gun owners, $500. Well, yes, there is a report that they are offering that and that's true. But in this latest move, uh, it's to rat out anybody for anything. So see, he's discredited. What? We were talking about that earlier with a caller where they will go, man, Alex Jones or whoever is really discredited. <laughs> I mean, they claim Obama's not popular <laughs> when all the numbers show we're telling the truth. So again, it's an appeal to ignorant people out there. Alex Jones claims that he interviewed William Benny. Benny claims he worked for U.S. intelligence. That's undisputed. But preying on the audience. <laughs> he claims it. And Wayne Madsen. And, and people that are ignorant don't know how to go look that up. They just go, well, maybe it's not true. Maybe the NSA isn't spying on me. Weird Al Yankovic, you know, makes fun of Alex. That is a CIA operation. I don't know if they're just regurgitating it, but that's from the 1963 document. That's from the Clinton White House documents from the mid-90s. I mean, we know the Clinton Library. They go, hey, we want to control info. A new press will rise if we allow it to. We've got to discredit anybody that doesn't put out what we say. And even legitimate media that, that's going along with us can't be allowed to operate or it'll create new media. Call everyone a conspiracy theorist or a racist. Hi, would you like... Uh, Broccoli and cheese soup. No, I think I'll have split pea. You're racist. Now, I'm being sarcastic there, but I mean, there's a thing with the TSA where if you say, I don't want to go to the naked body scanner, they will call you a conspiracy theorist. It's like saying, I like 2% milk better than whole fat milk. They go, conspiracy theorist. I like red socks, not blue socks. Conspiracy theorist. It's a war on knowledge, a war on debate. It's a way to change the subject. Hey, I think our government's too big. Shut up, conspiracy theorists. You aren't allowed to talk. You aren't allowed to have a view. You're going to be slapped down. <sighs> That's the game they play. And, or they'll say, oh, alternative media just wants to make money. Well, of course people have to fund themselves. Or he just writes books to make money. Yeah, you have a passion to write and you want to make money. Sure. What builds civilization? And I just look at all these news headlines. I mean, my God, the FBI is in mainstream news today, the Washington Times reports, to monitor all media in the U.S. to see what we say about them and put us in files. I mean, can anybody say Soviet Russia? Soviet Russia. 
Soviet Russia. I'm glad someone said it. I mean, just at a certain point, Calgon, take me away. <laughs> just, do we really want to live in a third world dictatorship? Um, U.S. Border Patrol, how many people on board? Me. U.S. citizen. Yeah, but does it really matter? Not anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> Border Patrol. Does it matter around the citizen? No, not anymore. Wave on through. That was taped on the 29th, five days ago. Or I guess six days ago. CDC concerned about airborne transmission of Ebola virus. Well, of course they are. Federal emergency directs airline staff to prevent spread of infectious material through the air. So there'll be a bunch of fear-mongering on citizens and people. And rightfully, you should if you're coming in out of Liberia or Sierra Leone or Nigeria or anywhere else in West Africa. Other countries are just banning flights out of those countries. Other African countries are. Uh, Arab countries are, are doing it. But if America does it, Geraldo Rivera will come out and say it's racist, literally. Uh, you know, Infowars is bad. Drudge is bad. Keith Oberman's attacking. We're bad. We're just, we're just fear mongers, folks. There's nothing bad in South America or Central America or in Liberia. I was talking to an aid worker who was over there and her boyfriend got killed. And, and they were in an African country, supposedly not that dangerous. And they came in and hacked him up, screaming whitey in the African language as they chopped him up with a machete. And I had a guest on the show where that happened. And then, because, you know, most of these, you think only racist or white people? I mean, give me a break, folks. So naive, this country is just helplessly brainwashed by television. And African countries aren't letting people fly in from the really bad areas. But we are going to have open ones. And Geraldo Rivera is going to run around screaming at people that want to control the border. I mean, look, what's the point of being a citizen if anybody can vote? Anybody can get welfare? I mean, it's a joke. It's meant to bankrupt us, period. And Geraldo is not stupid. He wants to sit on top of the slag heap. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. He wants to wreck the country, but be politically correct in this new hell based on what color you are. <clears throat> and people go, good, you whiteies will get what you did forever. You know history, everybody enslaved everybody. It was white people ended slavery. Shut up, racist. Shut up, idiots. See, I start getting focused on serious news and I get mad. Well, of course they're worried about airborne Ebola. Look at this headline right here. From two years ago, disease daily. From pigs to monkeys, Ebola goes airborne. When news broke out, the Ebola virus had resurfaced in Uganda. Investigators in Canada were making headlines of their own with research indicating the deadly virus may spread between species through the air. Well, I'd always go to a Ted Knight voice now when I'm reading. Aquaman summoned three giant whales, a team compromised of researchers from the National Center for Fire and Animal Disease, uh, the University of, see, I, I'm just going to be serious here, four sino molecularless Marcarius, a species of monkey commonly used in laboratories. The animals were separated by wire cages to prevent direct contact between the species. Within a few days, the inoculated piglets showed clinical signs of infection, indication of Ebola. Then it went on that they got Ebola. Maybe Ted Knight had Ebola. <laughs> Maybe he, like, wanted a big vial of it. Maybe, <laughs> God, God, stop putting Ted Knight on the screen. It's going to cause me to really screw around. I want to go watch Caddyshack tonight. Or an old Mary Tyler Moore with all the political correct brainwashing. But you still watch it for Ted Knight. I'm not fired, am I, Lou? Uh, anyways, this is very serious, and the government thinks it's no big deal. Maybe they've gone crazy like me and are just laughing about it. I don't know, but um, here's the big story by Kit Daniels up on Infowars.com. Ebola may have already crossed border. Secret Border Patrol report shows. There's no doubt feds are shipping illegals from Ebola-struck countries across the U.S. at taxpayer expense. After the Customs and Border Protection reported that its agents caught nearly 1,000 illegals from Ebola 
hit countries this year, meaning many more have not been apprehended. The question remains whether President Obama will secure the border and stop shipping illegals across the U.S. to prevent a major pandemic from killing Americans. And then it goes into the secret report by the CBP at the top of the Border Patrol that has now come out. We probably just need to add in here that that is a secret report and link to Breitbart. We have the whole report in the article, and it just goes over the fact that most of these West Africans are going to the East Coast, and places like Austin, Texas is actually listed as one of their destinations. And nothing against uh, these Western Africans. Uh, a lot of times they're taxi drivers, and when I need a taxi, and in fact, not lots of times, every time a West African has driven me to the airport or taken me back or taken me to pick up a car at the shop or whatever, seven, eight, nine, ten times, they're a wild listener going, Alex Jones, oh, God bless you. Oh, we love you. I mean, I, I, so they all like me. I like them. Nothing against West Africans. The, because the media will say it's racist. I don't want Ebola. I bet they don't want Ebola. I bet West Africans that live here now don't want Ebola. And I bet they want the people coming in illegally uh, to be tested. But I've, I've forgotten how when the uh, West Africans, I always ask where you're from, and it's just like, it's West Africans. That's the most populous area of Africa anyways. So most, a lot of the Africans coming in from Africa are West Africans, the old Gold Coast. And that's Liberia, Sierra Leone, uh, Ivory Coast, um, Nigeria, all those areas. Anyways, uh, I'm getting off into anthropology, sociology here. We're going to come back and take phone calls. Will and uh, whoever else is up next. We're getting to all of you. We have to go into overdrive. We're going to do it all. Infowars.com. Well, I think it's good news. Uh, Israel has withdrawn most of its ground troops from Gaza, meaning the operation might be coming to an end. Anyway, you slice it, that's good in my view. NASA announces Mars 2020 rover payload to explore the red planet as never before. Tennessee doctor in self-quarantine on return from Liberia, Ebola hotspot. Uh, let's go back to your phone calls. Let's talk to Will in FEMA Region 5. What former state are you uh, in, sir? Uh, Michigan on the lovely west coast of Lake Erie. All right. Well, uh, what did you call in about today? Well... As you had on your thing where uh, Toledo and what part of Michigan I'm in uh, had to have our water shut off all weekend because of that uh, algae bloom. And I'm wondering, could that have been possibly caused by all the weather manipulation? Well, we know there's a lot of weather manipulation going on, but that's classified. Slaves aren't told that. Uh, so, again, um, we don't know. But they're saying that, 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 that algae bloom created toxins that would kill you if you drank the water. Uh, but now they're saying it's okay. What do you think the answer is? Uh, well, they're cleaning out the system. I'm not touching the system at least for another week. And uh, run well, the Here's the deal. This is a government caught thousands of times doing lethal tests on citizens and killing people. So I'm never drinking the tap water. I always drink filtered or distilled or high-quality bottled, preferably from someplace like Italy, where they take pride in not poisoning their population. Uh, so... Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I mean, there's a plug for Pro Pure, ten percent off promo code water on super high quality stainless steel gravity fed systems that blow away the competition at a lower price at InfoWarsStore.com and support the InfoWar while you're at it. I mean, if that isn't Guardian of the Galaxy, good. I don't know what is. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. Let's go ahead and talk to Patrick in North Carolina. You're on the air. Welcome. Hello, Alex. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Just first time, long time. Appreciate everything you do for us. Thanks for putting up with me, brother. Yeah, you got it. The thing that I want to talk about is, you know, and it seems like this has just kind of gone away from mainstream news and, and everything, is the this $20 trillion debt bubble that at the end of Obama's term that we're going to be stuck with because you know, the, there's not going to be any money for another bailout because it's coming. And, and by the way, that, that, that $19 trillion, about to be $20 trillion, seven plus trill of that it was under uh, Obama. Again, he said he would cut it in half. Uh, it's almost doubled under his tutelage, under his loving hand. 
Uh, and again, there's no way to pay this back ever. And if you count the real expenditures, it's more like 20 trillion, what we've signed on to. This is to wreck us. So the bigger question is, why do they want to wreck the borders, the water, uh, the fund Al-Qaeda? What is their plan? What I think is, is Obama knows what he's doing is probably going to cost him the Senate in the fall. And just like you said, he's got a pen and a phone. So he doesn't really need the Senate. But what he needs the Senate to be is in, even if it's just a one-seat majority, when the dollar collapses, for it to fall on the Republicans, because they'll run the Senate and the House, and the media will never blame him for it. Oh, I, oh that's a plan. Let the Tea Party get in, implode everything right when they get in and blame them, and the public would believe it. Absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah, and, you know, something else that you know no one talks about is, after this 2014 election, you know, he's going to have free will to do executive orders on, you know, the Second Amendment because nobody talks about what he voted on. Oh, yeah, and he's already gotten away with everything else. They're just setting the precedent. Oh, I know. This is the season of crazy land. Everybody better be involved. If you're a good person in the FBI or Border Patrol or wherever, leaking information, exposing treason. That's your duty. Like the Border Patrol just did with this document on how Ebola can come across and probably has. It's up on InfoWars.com. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. InfoWars.com. Yeah. <laughs> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> InfoWars.com. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's important to, 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 to denigrate Obama. So I think I'm going to come out with an image of a dog with the head of Obama on it with that character. What's the character's name that people put in their cars peeing on Ford or Chevy? Calvin, yeah, urinating on them. And, and you know, because, I mean, I'm done with these people. People have already come up with it, it looks like. Obama urinating on the economy. There you go. I mean, when the shoe fits, wear it. See, I didn't even know that was out there. <laughs> And again, if a Republican acts like this, I'll do it with them. I'm tyrants. But I'm a Republican, but I'm a Democrat. No, you're not. You're a piece of garbage. And if a politician has to do some political things to compromise, to move the country in the right direction, I'm not going to jump on them. But when you want to destroy the country and you really enjoy it, I got a problem. Bob in Maine, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Alex? Um Reading a book, series of books right now it might be a possible suggestion for a guest on your show. Have you ever heard of this guy called Matthew Bracken? He wrote the three uh, uh, enemies, foreign and domestic books. Have you heard of those? No, sounds interesting. What's it about? It's, it's fiction, but it's basically about the first book starts out with false flag terror, how they set up a veteran uh, to do like a, uh, a sniper shooting at a, at a uh, football stadium. Sounds like they turned that into the uh, shooter film of Mark Wahlberg. It, it's it's the books. If you read the books, they're kind of in the same vein, but it's a totally different offer. His name's Matthew Bracken. He's got his own website. He seems like it'd be a really interesting guest for your show. No, I mean, all I know is what I've read about him on the internet, but the three books are really good. It's, it deals with subjects that are right in the same vein as your show. Well, that's how you find them. I mean, you can do it with music. You can do it with fiction. You can do it with reality like we do. Everybody's got to produce their own media to counter the globalists. That's why... Every major drama, sitcom, you name it, is anti-family, anti-gun, anti-freedom, because this is the authoritarian takeover. You can look at the propaganda of the system and see how bad the establishment is. Great points. Appreciate your call. Let's talk to Steve in Chicago. Wants to talk about Nancy Pelosi. What do you want to say about Mr. Pelosi? Okay, well, Mr. Pelosi got into a little finger-pointing with uh, Representative Tom Marino from Pennsylvania. She called him insignificant. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and yeah. she began shaking, too. Uh, the story's up on Drudge, Fox Politics. We should have played the clip. I mean, that's the kind of sensational stuff that's good. We don't just cover something if it's sensational. We cover something if it's sensational and pertinent for viral spread. You know, with two Ds for a double dose of pimping the New World Order and bringing them down. Uh, but, yeah, she got really, really upset, and uh, we'll try to pull that up later. Go ahead. Also, also, uh, your congresspeople are on vacation. They are staking out places and will be talking to people. I would highly suggest everybody go visit them wherever they're speaking at and start raising a ruckus. You know, that's a great point. We should all have a call for action like the Tea Party first went after Republicans and Democrats, 
So the Republicans got scared and tried to embrace it. That didn't fully work, so now they just openly demonize it. I should shoot a History of the Tea Party video about that. Everyone, including my reporters, ought to go down and find our congressmen and women when they're visiting the local church or the local store or the local HEB, you know, wherever, having a meet and greet, and go get in their face. That's what this is all about. I totally agree with you, Steve. Well, I just want to say I'm a, I'm a ex-Bercher and also uh, support a little bit of the uh, the uh, Democrat uh, of the LaRouches when they were here in Chicago, and they were actually got in, and Democrats unceremoniously kicked them out. So they have a they have a, a little bit of a, a bite in this game when it comes to uh, the Democrats uh, playing. Oh, I know the John Birchers. You know, uh, I mean, I, I think they're good people. I don't know about your local organization, but their ideas are good. And a lot of the ideas of the LaRouche people are good. I don't agree with some of their solutions. But thank you so much. I'm out of time. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing. And the best part is it helps fund Infowars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfowarsLife.com.